what's so offensive to me, I love that, that John Stewart is back, but what's so offensive to me is there's difference between age and intelligence. The problem with this country is that we don't value people with their wisdom. We don't value seniors. We don't value our Okay, and I'm sick of this age as a problem. Sonny Hostin of The View was just one of the chorus of people in the media who were outraged that Jon Stewart used his first appearance back on The Daily Show to attack Joe Biden over his age. Now, uh, thankfully, Stewart didn't stand down on last night's edition of The Daily Show. And we're gonna get to that in just a moment because he did in fact uh, hit back at some of the most outlandish attacks against him. One of those attacks though came from Mary Trump, who is related to Donald Trump. She argued that not only is Stewart's both sides are the same rhetoric not funny, it's a potential disaster for democracy. In response, Jon Stewart said, I guess as the famous saying goes, democracy dies in discussion. Now Stewart of course was referencing the Washington Post slogan, democracy dies in the darkness. But he continued by saying, quote, I have sinned against you, I'm sorry. It was never my intention to say out loud what I saw with my eyes and brain. Love I gotta guy. say, I do, I do, that, that was a perfect response. Because to your point, the point that you make off in Jenk, the gaslighting is what really gets under my skin, right? The fact that they keep telling us that what we are experiencing, seeing, it, it's all in our imagination. We're crazy. No, 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 Joe Biden is totally fine. Look, and I agree with Sonny Hostin. 81 doesn't necessarily mean that you would be unfit to serve as President of the United States. I think it's less about age and more about how your age has impacted you. And is anyone really gonna argue that Biden's 81 year age is not impacting him? Come on. Come on. Yeah. So this is why we love John Stewart. Uh, democracy dies in discussion. That's hilarious. And it gets right to the point. So you guys don't want to have a discussion about who's the best candidate to beat Trump. Well, why wouldn't we want to have that discussion? Then maybe we could pick the best candidate. No. Let's pick the candidate that, that uh, is honestly the worst candidate. Why? Because shut up. That's the Democratic position is shut up. So look, I, the Mary Trumps of the world are their own goons and thugs. Maybe shit runs in the family. Uh, because she's among the people who, are, if you ever criticize Democratic leadership, are the ones that are like, you better not say anything. The job of the media is to do propaganda and only propaganda. Oh, that we have a heretic. John Stewart is a heretic. He's daring to say things that are not just purely propaganda in favor of Democratic leadership. Okay, look, I've used this football analogy before. As a Steelers fan, I think I've got a good analogy here. Kenny Pickett was our quarterback. He wasn't doing a great job when we said, hey, maybe you should pull Kenny Pickett and put someone else in. We didn't say that because we hate the Steelers. We said that because we love the Steelers and want them to do better. Maybe I have to talk slowly for Mary Trump and the other goons in the Democratic Party who believe the job of the media is not to tell the truth, but to lie on behalf of Democratic leaders. Sorry, Mary, no deal. By the way, I hate your cousin. I hate him probably more than you do. That doesn't mean I'm gonna lie for you. We might have millions of people watching this show, but you can be the difference maker because we just need 1% of our audience to be paid members. And then this show can be around forever. So you can make that difference. Click join now. Yeah, look, I think this is a broader problem with what audience increasingly audiences increasingly expect from the media, right? So media has become far more partisan in recent decades. And so people have come to expect that when they tune in to a particular show or to the news, that they're gonna get served exactly what they're looking for, right? The partisan politics that they're looking for. And I'm really sad to see that it's also impacted, you know, progressive outlets, leftist outlets who think that calling certain policies into question. I mean, I'll give you a perfect example, the whole, you know, migrant crisis thing and how a group of migrants in New York City were on film beating up cops. People were outraged that I had the audacity to even cover that story. Like, why are you covering that story? You're not, you're not playing fair for the team. But I'm not on a team. 
right? I, I mean, sure, I have my own personal political views, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna deny reality or the existence of reality just to look out for my team. I don't wanna be a propagandist. I didn't go to school to be a propagandist. But this is what people increasingly expect and want, Jenk. And it creates a really difficult situation, both for the country and for people who actually wanna do their jobs appropriately, who actually wanna to get to the bottom of a story and know what the reality is. It's a, it's a huge problem. Yeah. And it creates more division in the country. That's the reason why we have two different groups of people now who see reality entirely differently. Yeah, so look, we fought against both sidesisms for the whole 22 years we've been here. I wrote about it in my book, but so are the Republicans worse on almost every issue? Yes, on some issues like gun control, it's not even close. So you have to call it as it is. But on issues where the Democrats are wrong, are we supposed to lie? Is does but a lot of Democrats like Mary Trump think we are. They think that's their, our job is to lie on behalf of Democrats to make them look better. No, so, I'm, no not they, in, I'm not interested. Yeah, and we're not, not interested, interested in that. We're not. So look, by the way, good news for Mary Trump. The entire mainstream media agrees with her. So like you go on Morning Joe, Oh my God, the lie on behalf of Democrats and Joe Biden 24 seven, you got, you got it covered. All of them at MSNBC. So, but. It's it's like that group we reported about the, the donors in favor of Israel that if they see anyone being fair to Palestinians, they try to get them fired, and like the the democratic version of fascists, uh, like Mary Trump, are like John Stewart says something that's true. Hurry up, to attack him, attack him, attack him. Attack him. No, Biden's not anyone. Uh, Biden looks great. He's super young. He's he's the best. Everybody say he looks super young. Everybody say he looks super young. No, he's Trump. Who's old? He's Trump. All right, you look like an idiot and a maniac, okay? Again, maybe it runs in the family. And sorry, I care about news, so I'll do a correction. I referred to Trump as her cousin earlier, Trump is her uncle. So whatever family issues you have with him, God bless. Uh, you probably don't criticize him enough. But if you're asking us to kiss Biden's ass, no deal. I know that breaks your heart that we won't do propaganda for him. But go ahead, cry. <laughs> Why won't they lie? Why are they saying the actual news? That's not what we do. And that, by the way, why now, do you think John Stewart became so popular? Cuz that's not what he does. So cry more. Now, John Stewart isn't the only one receiving backlash. So is the New York Times and in recent reporting it was disclosed that the Biden White House has actually reached out to the New York Times to basically express their displeasure in the reporting about Joe Biden's age. So in an interview released yesterday, A.G. Sulzberger, who is the publisher of the New York Times, stated that the White House is furious with the Times for daring to mention that Biden is old. He stated, quote, we are going to continue to report fully and fairly, not just on Donald Trump, but also on President Joe Biden. He is a historically unpopular incumbent and the oldest man to ever hold this office. We've reported on both of those realities extensively and the White House has been extremely upset about it. We are not saying that this is the same as Trump's five court cases or that they are even, they are different, but they are both true and the public needs to know both those things. And if you are hyping up one side or downplaying the other, no side has a reason to trust you in the long run. I agree with him entirely, 100%. And I think that, I, I just think that's the right mindset to have if in fact your, your venture, what you are engaging in is supposed to be considered journalism as opposed to propaganda to prop up one party or another. Yeah, I agree with Sulzberger 100%. I wish that Sulzberger agreed with himself 100%. Because the reality is, they think the New York Times is too tough on them. I think I don't think the New York Times is anywhere near too tough on Joe Biden. I think they're way, way too soft on Joe Biden. But hey, okay, if you make them feel defensive, I don't, I don't mind because it looks like they're going to double down on. Saying you know things that are true, which I, I wish they would quadruple down on it. Uh, but oftentimes, New York Times also is in the Democrat protection business.